Point nine. It's good to be in your company this morning. And, of course, we have Mr. Ernest Emery with us today. Emery Enterprises, um, no surprise uh, to anyone um, that he's here uh, because he's been here before and we've discussed a number of issues. But let's say uh, a very good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Backus, and to you, all your listeners in St. Kitts, Nevis, and overseas. Well, it is a pleasure to have you here. I always like to be in your company. And, you know, of course, um, your brother... Your dear departed uh, brother, who I don't really, really want to upset you today, I was also the chairman of this organization, and I consider him to be a friend, as I consider you as well. Uh, tell us about COVID-19 and what you've had to do and what you may have learned from it, even as it continues to unfold. That's Well, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to be here. There's a lot in life to learn, and this COVID have affected all of us in this world. I have learned many things. Um, I've learned to be resilient. I've learned to stay positive. I've learned the importance of saving. I've learned the importance of family, like we all have, love, the importance to look out for your neighbor, the importance, again, not to be alone, because this COVID, some persons were alone. Some persons choose to be alone. And when they realized they were absolutely alone with no one to turn to, to even say, to even have a conversation, um, some of them mentally couldn't handle it. So it's, it, this has taught us all a lot of lessons. As far as business is concerned, it has taught me how you should never, ever give up. And this is why Mr. Hazel, um, in listening to him, Mr. Alexis Hazel, he has a very positive mental attitude, and that is the attitude to always take. Don't ever be negative and try to avoid negative conversations, meaningless conversations, and persons who are going to discourage you from achieving your goals or discourage you from what you want to achieve in terms of for yourself, your family, um, your business, and everything else that's important to you. What did you have to do when you looked at your organization, you looked at the constraints, you looked at what was coming around the corner, but you wanted to stay in business, you wanted to continue to provide that service. You just renovated, you've just invested, reinvested. Uh, what did it take? What did you say to your people? Because they also would be uh, facing the unknown. Well, the first thing I had to do was to be positive, to think, to really think. A lot of us, this COVID have helped us to, to re-evaluate re our lives and to think about where we're going. It is so easy to give up, to raise your hand and say, okay, I've had enough. But you cannot ever, ever give up, as Mr. Hazel says. Once you have life, you have to proceed. It's like being on a treadmill. If you stop, that treadmill is going to throw you off. So you have to continue walking, continue life's journey. And the stronger ones will succeed. It is so easy to say, I quit. Whether it's in a business situation or a personal situation. It could be a marriage, friendship, employer, employee. Say, you know, I quit, I give up. Or a race. Even though you're tired, you still go the extra mile. And once you get to the extra mile, you have feel a sense of accomplishment, achievement. And so me, for me personally, I had to show strength to carry on, not only for me, but for my employees, for the public that I serve, and for in recognition of the hard work that my parents, especially my dad, because he started the bakery business, and for my brother, who worked along beside me all over these years. I carry on for them. And as a business owner, a manager, your staff look up to you. You are a leader. And all these business owners in Sinkers, no matter how small or big your business is, the principle of business, of management, remains the same. There's some businesses who started small, and because of their determination, their hard work, they have succeeded and they grow. And 
like TDC, for example, that is very small with three persons. And you have seen how TDC have grown over these years. Hotsfords, many other businesses have grown throughout the years because of how the hard work they've put in. So that formula for hard work should not change. Never change that formula. Sometimes we forget where we came from and, and then we lose it all. So we have to start over again. And life throws many things at us, good and bad. Some people say sometimes it's good luck. It's not good luck. It's positive thinking. And what you perceive, you achieve. Mr. Hazel said the same thing earlier. He says once you have a mindset that you want to achieve your goals, you will achieve it. It's, it's so difficult sometimes because we speak the same language and sometimes we don't understand each other. We speak English and the other persons understand English. But truly, they don't understand what you're talking about because you try to explain to them the importance, like some parents try to explain to the kids what they should and shouldn't do. And they still do the things in opposite of what their parents have told them. So they say, okay, who can hear would feel? And so you have to understand how life works. You give out and you get back what you put in. You get up back what you put out. I have recognized that from a young boy growing up. I listen to my parents, I learn from other people's mistakes, and I try not to make the same mistakes. I know that we have challenges in life, and we have to stay positive. We have to think positive. When we had the virus first came, I also recognize that it was not going to be the virus that's going to be the major problem. It was going to be the economic downturn in the economy. And I saw it come in. And I reached out to the public and told them that in a few months it's going to get worse. But we have to stick together. We have to work together. We have to support each other, support the government in office that are working. Because I know it's not easy for every government minister today. Everyone have had problems, and they go and ask for help. But the government can only do so much. Any government who have run this country can only do so much. They set the rules, the parameters for us to, to uh, make it in life. And of course, whatever assistance they can give, they can give. They will give. But they cannot help everyone. We, we all have in this together, so we all have to help each other. Um, Mr. Backus, it has not been easy, but life is not easy. <laughs> um, I've seen so many people out there today who are experiencing harder times, unbelievable economic and family problems, but they too have to continue. We see someone walk out the street, and we, we don't know what they're going on, what's going through their life. If they have money to make to buy the next meal, they have this, their children to look after. They have other problems apart from the COVID. So we have to just try to do what we can. And in my business, I talk to my staff and tell them the importance of working together, staying committed to whatever you like to do in life, whether you want to um, donate your time, help your neighbor, success. And another thing I want to mention too, some people believe success is all about money. It's really not all about money. Because there are many things that people can succeed at. They become successful in their career, um, could be a um, a preacher, for example, the preacher who have served God for the past 40 or 50 years. So he has been successful. But he too have had his, his test in time. God tests all of us. He too, over the years, have been tested. His faith has been tested. 
So I want to just talk about the importance of staying committed and believing the young people today. You have to think and think hard. Believe in yourself. Listen to your parents. Do the right thing. When you believe, you must truly believe. When your parents talk to you and you say you understand, you must truly understand. When the preacher in the church he says from the pulpit, the Lord will bless you today. Your life will be transformed from now on, and he said it with conviction, with a stern voice, believing in faith. He doesn't say, the Lord might bless you. you know, he doesn't say, well, if the Lord feels that you deserve it, he will give it to you. No, no. He says it with such positive conviction. He says, you are blessed and you will receive your blessing today. And that's how you have to feel. That's how you have to look at life. Positive all the way. Never ever thinking negative. Otherwise, if there's some doubt in your mind, you will never achieve whatever goals you want to achieve. It's amazing. The mind, the, the, the mind is very powerful. And there's a saying, be careful what you wish for, because you might just get it. So you wish for the most positive things. And once you wish for those positive things, you will receive it. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of being, thinking positive Architects. Architects are very special people. Because an architect, they have the vision. They can look at an empty piece of land and see the house that they want to build. Not only see the house, but they can live in the house. They know exactly where the sun is going to shine from, rise from, fall, set. They see the bedroom, the light switches, they see everything. They have that vision. Other persons don't have that vision, so they have to give the plan, and I, they have to give their, their, all of the, the what they want to an architect, and then he put it into a plan for them. So you have to think about your life the same way an architect can manage the plan and see the plan. You have to think about your life, what you want from your life, and everything that you have put out there in terms of what you want to achieve for yourself and your family, it will come. I promise you. You listen to Will FM's 90.9. You're speaking to Mr. Ernest Emery. It's a survival story, um, his adjustments uh, during COVID-19, and what he's done to keep his business open, keep his staff employed, and continue to offer a quality service uh, to members of the public. We'll be right back with Mr. Em uh, Mr. Emery in just a moment. Uh, we'll hear now from our partners. Are you wondering what to do this holiday season? Will it be the same? Will you be able to give your family all that they need? Well, with TDC Financial Services, all your holiday woes will disappear. You can get up to $35,000 unsecured for your holiday needs. Give us a call at 465-6516 or 469-5430 to find out how we can help to make your holidays happier for you and your family. TDC Financial Services, where money is made made easy every day your immune system is compromised you use up vitamin c quickly and even faster with stress and cold burst back into life with halib orange burst back into health with a thousand milligrams of vitamin c as much as in 12 oranges each effervescent tablet is bursting with fresh fruit flavor sparkling orange lemon and sugar-free black currants also suitable for diabetics health never tasted so good halib orange bursting with flavor bursting with health you to the Will FM, it's 90.9, .9, and of course we continue our, our conversation. Uh, you said something that resonated with me. Um, you said people, uh, you talk to some people and they're not listening. Uh, very often, I've had experiences where I really think people have already made up their minds. It doesn't matter what you say to them, they're not going to budge because you're challenging a belief they have and they're very uh, defensive of the belief. So I'm going to ask you, how do you get your staff, your associates to listen in the interest of all? Because... To some extent, COVID-19 protocols are alien to our culture. We love to hug, we love to kiss, we love, love to uh, you know, show affection and get close. 
uh, how do you get about getting the buy-in so that what you require happens even when you're not there? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question, Mr. Beckers. Um, first, we have to recognize that we're all different. We're all different. When you speak, there's some persons who want to learn, and as I said, there's some people already think they, they know everything. So you have to, you can't communicate in one way and expect everyone to take the message that you want to present to them. Sometimes you have to change the way you communicate to, a, to someone or a person differently from others. And then they understand. It's like speaking to a child. Sometimes you have to speak in a way that the child would understand. As an adult, you say a few words, and they, they got it already. But as a, as a child, you need to speak more in detail. Because as I said, you, un, you, you communicate to them, and they do this, the opposite. They don't understand what you're trying to tell them. And so I have my staff, my management team, and I speak with them, and they understand that when I speak with them, it's just, I talk with them because I love my staff. I want them to succeed. If they don't have a path or see an appreciation for what they're doing, um, you can't motivate them anymore. So they must, and money is not all about, mo money is not the only motivation factor in, in um, getting people to do what you want them to do. Sometimes you want to give a, a staff member a promotion. This happened several times. We want to promote a staff to a higher position, but they refuse that position. Because what comes along with that position sometimes, not apart, apart from an increase in salary, is an increase in, in responsibility. So there are some persons who don't want that responsibility. They're happy making their salary, they want to be able to, when they go home, forget about work, and they come back the next day, they deal with the work and never take their work home with them. And others have, are more than motivated in terms of achieving more in life. So if you want to achieve more, you have to give more. If you want to get more in life, you can't be ordinary. You have to be extraordinary. You can't give 40% and expect to receive 100%. You have to give 100% if you want 100%. Unfortunately, there are some, some persons who, who want to give as less as possible and receive as most as possible. It doesn't work that way. If you want anything in life, you have to put your mind to it. You have to, as I said, have faith that you will succeed. But even in putting your mind to it, it doesn't come on like a light switch. It takes time. Because if it came easy, you'd lose it easy. So you have to try to just think about the long term. You might be working in the company and you don't get the promotion that you think you deserve. You don't give up. You continue to pursue your dream, do the job with all your heart and energy, and you will get that promotion in time. But you can't just think about only receiving, you have to give. Sometimes you have to st step back at, and work a little longer, come in earlier, and the, your employer, whether your supervisor or your, or your boss, the owner, he will see or she will see the effort that you're putting into your work and will reward you. When the opportunity comes up, you will get it. But it t everything takes time. I don't know. Um, you are. <laughs> you've raised so many things I can recognize that I'm just going to not say. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm just going to ask you essentially, um, how have you made your adjustments? Um, I was in there. I met another businessman recently who was telling me, you know, it's amazing the variety that you're offering. So that comes with some level of skill sets and some level of organization. Um, what you're offering right now is not available anywhere else in terms of variety. And even some of the deals that you're offering have been unheard of. Uh, yes, Mr. Backus. Um, 
one of the other things, that, but I'll come to that, but one of the other things I've learned from the Kovic is the importance to stay focus. The importance to stay focus on your life. And this shutdown have made people, I hope a lot of people didn't waste their time just looking at TV because you need some quiet time to think about your life, where you're going, what you want for yourself and your family, and how to achieve those things. It was a time to think, a time to reset. And so I, to be quite honest, because of our success in other areas of business, I lost focus on the bakery, which is the business that started everything. That's why I said, never forget where you came from. And the Kovac, being here in Sinkets, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, I was able to see what was needed to stay focused on where I am, what business needs attention. And I realized the importance of expanding. And so with my mind and with the blessings of God, the connection that God and I have, because you have to listen to your inner sense, listen to that voice. All of us have, I gave a gentleman an example the other day. I said, you know, sometimes you might have a piece of paper, maybe, I've seen people throw bottles out their cards, and these people know it's wrong, and maybe they think about it before they do it. And just before they throw the bottle or the paper over the car, there's a voice that says, don't do it. Hold it until you get home. And another voice said, try, try it in the street, try it in, try it in, the, in the bushes. We know by try it in the bushes, by loitering, is not, not the right thing. But we still do it anyway. We know that committing crimes is not good, but we still do it anyway. But in the end, it's making choices, doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I choose to do the right thing. We're only going through this world once, as far as I know. Or I never heard, have never had any memory of past experiences in this world. So I can do it only. All I know is what I'm doing right now. We have, all of us have an amazing contribution that we can make. It doesn't have to be a big contribution in terms of, it's all, every contribution is relative. Everyone has the ability to change somebody's life. Contribute to somebody's life. Take a time out and talk to your children. Make the time for your kids. The same way that you remember your parents, whether it's in a positive way or a negative way, you have that opportunity, that privilege to change your kid's life, to change a young person's life, a person who never had. My father told me, he says, I never had a father to ask for a penny. He never knew his father. And it's amazing, he says he never had a father to ask for a penny. What's a penny? Because there's so many young people today, they go and say, Daddy, can I have $10? And, or twenty dollars and he gives them. But he says he never had a father to ask for a penny. It's incredible. So you, the, per- the listeners today, the young people, who have their parents alive, and you're so fortunate to have them alive, appreciate them, spend time with them, because that death is final, it's over. And for all of us who have family, people we love, persons who we have done bad and we want to we want it's important to say sorry it's important to apologize it doesn't take anything from you to say I'm sorry by doing that your conscience will be clear and you will sleep better at night time once your conscience is clear let that other person deal with whatever they have to deal with families are so important and so I just um, make clear that 
to my staff how much I love them. You know, I, it's amazing. I, I, um, I bought two generators recently for two members of my staff because the, the hurricane season was coming up and I told them it's important to have a generator. The hurricane season passed. Well, they didn't even want to accept. I said, no, no, it's important. I want you all to have a generator. And I, over the past few weeks, I asked them if they had already installed a generator. One member said yes. She had said her, her husband had installed it for her. And today we had the conversation. And she says, Mr. Aaron, I want to thank you because even though I didn't want it, you insisted it that I should get it and install it. And we thought the hurricane season was over and we didn't have to use it, but look at what happened yesterday. She was able to put on her lights. She had a young baby. She was able to see her baby at nighttime before she put her to bed. And she was able to take, see herself take a shower and, and, and have her food stay safe and fresh in the refrigerator. So that gave me a lot of pleasure because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We have no idea. Mr. Alexis did not know, Hazel did not know um, when he woke up that morning he would lose a home. But he has that faith, that faith in God and in himself that he will rebuild. And we have to encourage him and support him and never dwell on person's downfall. Unfortunately, some people they, they, they take pleasure in other person's plights in life. But we don't know what's going to happen to us the next day. We go to a funeral. Think about it. When you go to a funeral, you, it's not an event to just get dressed up and go to a funeral. It's an occasion of life. It's an occasion of life and death. And de death is final. And we don't know when or who will be the last, the next person we have to go to, to the funeral. Um, since I'm talking about funerals, I want to mention this, and hope the members of government is listening. For many years, I've been talking about the cemetery we have, Springfield Cemetery, and other cemeteries around the island. Springfield Cemetery is atrocious. It's, it's really a disgrace to see a cemetery full of grass up to your knees. All of us have family members, friends, who are buried there. That is our home. <laughs> Unless we choose to be, be, to be cremated and throw our ashes in the, in, the, in the sea. But all of us are going to go there one day. I have my, my, my plot of land up there. Eventually, we all end up there. So make up your bed. Apply, I appeal to the government. Please fix that cemetery. Keep it clean. Keep it organized. Sometimes a family member may want to go up and just sit by the grave. Maybe someone who just recently passed away, they want to sit by the grave and, and have a moment of peace a mental conversation with their loved one. How could you sit down and you have grass coming up to your, to your shoulders? How could you walk to the cemetery grave and step in over other graves or, or big holes that you're going to fall into? It is a shame. You know, whether, I don't expect everyone to, to agree with me, but believe me, I would like to invite everyone who is listening to take a, take a walk in the cemetery. And it should not be just fixed up and clean up at Christmas time, like every government has done throughout the years. It should be kept clean, kept in order. There should be some order in terms of how um, persons can walk and sit, areas to sit down and just have a, a sense of inspiration to think about the life of your departed family member or friend. I just thought I would mention that, Mr. Beckers.
You're listening to Win of Pems 98.9 on your dial. We're speaking to Mr. Ernest Emery, and we're having a conversation about survival, a survival story. Uh, we're going to hear from our partners when we come back. We'll speak about a special event happening at the weekend. time I call you, it's always about something good. What going on? Well, the TDC retail stores in St. Kitts and Nevis are at it again. The new stocks have arrived. Really? Yes, new furniture, printers, toys, appliances, electronics, housewares, even decorations, and so much more. <sighs> new is in. So, girl, Betty, when we going? You know me, I don't miss a beat when it comes to TDC. I'm getting ready to go to TDC Automotive, the business center, and the home and building depot No. And next week, we're definitely going over to CDS Nevis to see what they have over there, too. Betty, Betty, me ham here. Betty, you gone? Well, very good morning to you once again. You're listening to WinFM 98.9. It's seven minutes now before the midday hour with Miss Ernest Emery. We're speaking about... COVID-19 uh, survival uh, approaches and what he has done, his own experience and how he's managed uh, to to stay healthy and to stay motivated and to keep his staff motivated and to continue to roll out a service as expected uh, of a high-quality uh, enterprise. Now, there is an activity coming up on the weekend. We'll talk a bit about that. Um, I did mention early on that um, Emory Bakeries have offered so many uh, different products. Um, I know some of my fellow staff members have enjoyed uh, when we would stop by and pick up a few things you had uh, recently and probably still have. Uh, if you get to the, to, the, to the bakery at a particular time, you can get uh, <laughs> double your investment. Uh, you buy one, you get one free. And uh, many times uh, I've been celebrated on my return from the bakery when I approach WinFM, my staff almost standing at attention waiting to clap because of some good saltfish bread and all the material that you may have. And they have brought as well, and I've appreciated that. So um, well done, Mr. Emery. And um, what's happening this weekend? Um, Mr. Backers, yes, thank you. Uh, we're, happy, we're happy to do what we can to assist in, this, in these difficult times. This weekend, um, we are giving away, um, well, now we have given out 5,200 tickets for a lunch on Sunday. For the past um, about eight weeks, seven, eight weeks, we've been given 400, we start with 400 meals every Sunday. And these were, meals were going primarily to the churches. The churches would distribute the food. However, um, a lot of our customers um, have been asking for assistance. So we decided that we will, which is a comment that I made a few months ago, about maybe six six weeks ago, two months ago, that um, I would make 5,000 meals, which is actually on my birthday, the 15th, and distribute them. And so we've had a, a really um, high demand for these tickets, and so we increased it to 5,002, and they all finished. But we are still hoping that our chefs would increase the amount Maybe we go to 5,500. So persons who don't have tickets can still be served. Because for me, I think it's a great um, event. And in terms of my birthday, and uh, I have always um, taken pleasure of giving and not receiving. I never really um, felt good or looked forward to getting a, a birthday gift. I was told my brother, no birthday gifts, no Christmas gifts. But he would still give a little something that he thought I might want or appreciate. Um, so this weekend is all about giving more. And so I encourage everyone who have their tickets to use it. Some receive 
as many as six tickets because it's not only one person in the family. Some, some receive two, some receive ten. And so if you can't use the tickets, please give it to someone who needs it, who can who will use it, because after f- Sunday, the tickets will not be eligible anymore. We will not be giving those uh, meals out anymore. We certainly we have done a lot over the past few months, but I feel great in a, be, to be in a position to do it. And my staff, you talk about what motivates my staff. When I talk to my staff about what is happening in the world today, what's happening in St. today, they understand me. They understand and they respect and they also want to contribute. So I want to, read, I want to say publicly now, I want to thank my management staff, but in particular, I want to thank the two amazing chefs, Augustine and Oscar. They're both from the Dominican Republic, and they have been working every day for the past eight weeks without one day off, every day, seven days a week. Um, Every Sunday, I pick them up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and they come out and they prepare the meals for lunch. This weekend, they will start at midnight on Saturday, and they'll work, they'll work, they'll work all day, all night, midnight, and Sunday morning, until maybe 4, 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. So I want to commend them. Although, of course, they'll be rewarded uh, financially, I want to thank them for their time. Because some persons don't even want to give their time. They're giving their time, they realize the importance of, of offering what we're doing to the public in general. And so thank you, Augustine and Oscar. Well, just before we go, can we uh, have a word uh, about the arrangements uh, for uh, delivery and, and for receiving um, uh, the, the lunches? Yeah, the lunches will be served from the bakery, like, as we did when we had to shut down with the breads. Um, they'll be packaged, so no need to wait. As you walk by, you receive your package of, of um, a lunch package as well as a dessert will be served, and it will, it will flow very, very fast, very, very fast. We'll have, we have several persons who have offered to help to put the, luggage, the lunches together, package them, and distribute them. Um, everything will be done orderly. We'll have a line for persons with tickets and one without tickets, I will alternate between those lines, so so we'll move the lines, both lines, as quickly as we can. Um, on the menu for Sunday, uh, you know, a lot of people love chicken here, so we thought that we should put chicken on the menu. And um, also a lot of people love the barbecue ribs, uh, which is um, something that my brother and I started. It was called ribs and rolls. So these ribs will be marinated in wine and honey, and it's going to be fantastic. We're going to have um, black beans and rice, red beans and rice. We're going to have some lentils and rice. Uh, we're going to have a variety of rice and and um, salad, veg- vegetables, and um, and a dessert. So you pick up your lunch package, and there will be two DJs. One will be DJ Wet Dut, and the other is a Dominican DJ to provide some, um, not loud music, but moderately um, sound uh, music enough for persons to appreciate the afternoon, afternoon of celebration. And you started what time? We, on the tickets, it states that we start at 11.30. However, because of the amount of persons we, who will be coming, we want to start earlier, so Perhaps as early as 10.30 we'll start and we'll continue until all the food is finished. Well, Ms. Emery, we want to thank you very much and your team and wish you and your organization, your staff in particular, all the very best. And we want to offer you congratulations for your service. I know sometimes you do things and people may just um, have, you know, take it for granted, but uh, the fact that you're doing it is appreciated. We want to say to you, thank you so much. You're welcome, Mr. Backus. And as I said before, no matter what you do, Everyone can agree with you. And, <laughs> okay? So you just have to do what you have to do, and that's all. Thank you so much.
You're tuning in with the Prime Minister 9.9 on your dial, Mr. Ernest Avery. Spend some time with us today. We're doing